Philippians chapter number 3 this morning. And uh, I hope to get to run a lot this week, play ball a few times, and, and get rid of this. That's the best doctor I know of. Sweat it out. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. That I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain, the Apostle Paul told these people, to the resurrection of the dead. Look at verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He said, I ain't made it yet. But he said, watch this. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press, I push it, I'm pushing it toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The title of my sermon this morning is Spot On in 2017. I'm not sure I know what that means, but people write me letters all the time and say that preaching was spot on. And I think what they mean is right on target. What should be said at the right time. So my message this morning is spot on for 2017. I want you to give me attention, please. We had a great year last year. I did. We did. Uh, we run buses every single Sunday in the year last year. The devil fought every one of our drivers, every one of our workers, every one of our helpers, the devil fought. Except one, I think one Sunday in January had 12 inches of snow. That was almost a year ago now. So maybe it'll come, it'll come here in the next few weeks probably. Uh, I got to preach in a lot of places as usual. God honored uh, my, my life by allowing me to travel many states and preach meet lots of people, and I, I really personally don't know how many people I've seen saved. We had over a 1,000 at the Giant Spring Youth Rally in April with 58 people making profession of faith just in the past year. You know, a lot of people say, well, the good old days are gone. We just got through having the good old days for a lot of people. One of these days you'll look back and say, this is the good old days. Amen. The choir went to sing at a lot of different churches where we would go to revivals. I had a great time. Camp this year, youth camp, summer youth camp, was fab, uh, just fantastic. Over 15 kids saved, big crowd. My, 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 what a time. Bible school, we had a great time in Bible school talking about the Christian Olympics, then the camp meeting, sweetheart banquet back in, in February, the couple's trip, and not to mention all this to what we would say normal Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. I never had to miss church. I had not miss uh, church. I, I say this once in a while, and I'm not bragging. I'm giving glory to God. I've been preaching since I was 19 years old, literally thousands and thousands of times. And I have never, ever had to miss one time preaching for, for health reasons. You know, that's a testimony. I don't know another preacher nowhere then I, most of them missed three or four years just because just they feel bad. But God's been good to me, and I have never had to miss one time preaching. Now, there's been times when the plane would get there late, out of my control. That's happened a time or two in 40-something in years. But I've never had to miss because of sickness. To God be the glory. Amen? I mean, I might have a heart attack this evening. But God has been good to me down through the year. He gets all the glory for that. I ain't crazy. I know where that comes from. Somebody bigger than me has been keeping me going. And he has you too. Ain't that right? And so as I start this new year, I'm going to disappoint some people, uh, but I'll, I'll thrill others depending on how your heart is. Now I want to say a few things about it. First thing I'm going to say is my burden for 2017. My burden for 2017, I do have a burden. 
I have a burden for my country, the United States of America. I'd love to see God send another move, a revival in America. Do I believe it's possible? Yes, of course I do. Do I believe it's probable? No. No, I don't. Our country has made some bad, bad decisions. Our country has made official stands on stuff that's completely opposite of what God said is right and wrong in the Bible. The uh, abortion ruling, the same-sex marriage ruling, the uh, transgender stuff, all of this is against God. People say we're haters. We don't, it's got nothing to do with hate. It's got nothing to do with race. It's got nothing to do with being a bigot. It's got so, everything to do with right and wrong. We don't care who you are, what color you are, what gender you are. That means nothing. What matters is what's right and what's wrong. You can't get that through people's head. If you say anything about somebody, they say you hate them. It's not, that's not it at all. I don't hate nobody. There's not one person in this town or this country that I couldn't go down here to the altar with and put my hand on their shoulder and say, God bless them and help them. And I mean that. I mean that. And uh, I, my burden is that we'd have a revival in this country, uh, mercy and direction for our country. We need to pray for our new president coming in here in a few weeks. He, he don't know what to do. He, he ain't got enough sense to, even, uh, to know how to, but let's pray God would put in his heart the right decision to appoint the right people at the Supreme Court. Those Supreme Court positions are more important than even in the, in the president because they're in there for life and they're going to shape the values and what are, which where our country goes in the next year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, if the Lord don't come. So I got a burden for my country that God would lead our leaders uh, and, uh, and that the Lord would help us and send revival and that know that the Lord is God once again and that people would take the Lord serious. Not just a, not a, 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 just a difference of opinion or politics. It's what's right and wrong. We need to pray for our country that we will stand with the nation of Israel, ladies and gentlemen. You've all heard on the news how that uh, just in the last few weeks, our, the president now has uh, they've had legislators and stuff like that, and, and that sides against what the people of Israel want. I say it again. I say it with everything within me. God gave that land to Israel. And he gave it to the descendants of Abraham through Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, not Ishmael. It is not the, uh, the Philistines' land. It is not the Muslims' or Islam's land. They are not supposed to share that land God gave that land to Israel. So when stuff like that comes on TV and you're a little bit confused about it, always remember, the Lord told Abraham, I'll bless them that bless you and I'll curse them that curse you. And Matthew 25 tells us the judgment of the nations, how that God will separate them as a sheep and divide from the goat. That's not individuals, that's nations is what it said. So my burden for 2017 is for our country. My burden for 2017 is our own county, right here in Burke County. You hear of so much drugs, so much crime. So I mean, uh, 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 Burke County needs some churches that are on fire for God. Burke County needs some people that have a burden for souls. Burke County needs a church that cares about the Lord and about His work. That's my burden for this year. Revival, conviction, people that know God's real. Right here in this town, in this county. We're eat up with religion. There's churches everywhere. And most of them dead is 4 o'clock in the morning. Brother, we need, my burden is that there'll be some churches. I'm not talking about just making a noise. I'm about real God and real power and real conviction where you'll know God's there. That's my burden for this year. Secondly, this morning, my predictions for 2017. People say, what do you think is going to happen, preacher? I'm going to tell you my predictions for this year. I'm not a prophet. I don't have the gift of prophecy. But I got a Bible and I got a brain. And there's my predictions come from my heart praying and my Bible and my brain. You ready? Now, I believe in this coming year we're going to see more natural disasters happening on a national and worldwide scale. Climate change, definitely. There's no doubt about it. Now, the global warming movement is a trick of the devil to try to shut down our industry. And the globe might be getting warmer. No big deal. No problem. It's done it before. Cold weather will come again. Uh, we know that. Uh, we will see more natural disasters, more earthquakes, 
more famines, more sinkholes. These sinkholes just popping up out of clear blue, swallowing up houses and neighborhood. More drought, more floods, more record highs and more record lows. Weird things happening in the weather, in the sign of strange weather and unusual patterns of weather. Not only that, we will see more senseless crimes committed. What I mean by that? I'm not talking about in the old days, man had money and the other man didn't have money. He'd hold a gun on him and take his money. That's a crime and that's bad. But we are seeing senseless crimes where a person just goes in and just shoots people just to have something to do, runs over somebody, or, or just drive by shooting, blam, shooting through total strangers' windows and murdering people. You're going to see more and more of that. The Bible said evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. The Bible said the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Demons will be unleashed and there'll be people murdered and there'll be more shootings, there'll be more crimes, drugs will be worse, more, I, I believe we'll have a lot more blasphemous entertainment. This started out back in the 60s with the Beatles when John Lennon said, we're more popular than Jesus now and J John Lennon called Jesus, I quote, John Lennon, the most successful band in the history of the world, the Beatles, that some of y'all think was cute and all right, uh, John Lennon said, quote, that Jesus Christ, quote, was a dirty, stinking, Catholic, Spaniard bastard. That's what he said about Jesus Christ. And God let him get his brains blowed out. And John Lennon regrets saying that today. So all the other bands picked it up. If you want to get rich and famous, cuss God. And now what he said is clean Sunday school talk compared to what these bands are doing and saying now. And there'll be more and more of that because Marilyn Manson, I showed you, uh, let's see, a couple of Sundays ago, how he takes that Bible and rips a page out. You know what he's doing? He's making money. He's getting rich. He's saying, the devil will help me if I'll hurt him. If I'll hurt him and cuss him and turn kids away from him, the devil will help me. That's the way it works. And he's doing that. There'll be more of that in the coming year. You're going to see more blasphemy in movies. You're going to see more blasphemy in entertainment. You're going to see more and more and more of that. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Somebody said this. They said it's difficult to live in the present. It's ridiculous to live in the future. And it's impossible to live in the past. Let me give you that again. It's hard to live in the present. It's ridiculous to live in the future. And it's impossible to live in the past. I mean, what you've done last year is on your record, brother. It's on your record. It's done. Nothing you can ever do will change one day or one sin. All them nights that you sinned. Every time you went to bed with somebody you ain't married to. Every time you got drunk. Every time you done wrong. It's on your record. There ain't nothing you can do about it. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Somebody said for the new year, be at war with your vices, be at peace with your neighbor, and let the new year find you a better man and a chance to do better. Be at war with your vices. Now, number three, my goals for 2017. First, I want to get ready for the giant spring youth rally. The youth rally, the most exciting time of the year. It'll be here before you know it. I mean, I've already been making plans, but I told my wife yesterday, I said, now you're going to get it. You're going to hear it now. It's Youth Rally, Youth Rally, April 20, 21, 22. Live right, serve God, witness, pray more, invite others. I want to see our church get closer to God. Do you say amen? I want us all to get closer to God. You say, well, Brother Danny, the world's gone. So I thought you'd lighten up a little bit. I'm sorry I'm going to have to disappoint you this morning. I think we ought to buckle down real tight and tighten the hats, brother, and get a good grip on the, on the horns of the altar and get a hold of God 
and see our, our church get closer to God this year than we've ever been before. It's no time to back up. It ain't no time to backslide. I don't know what you're blaming your backslidity on this morning, but I'll tell you one thing. You're letting the devil trick you. Life's passing you by. Life's too short to stay backslid. Get back in here and serve God in 2017. Come on, y'all. Come on. Somebody said, well, I appreciate Brother Danny fussing at me to read, read the Bible. Well, I, I, I want to do that more. I want to encourage you to, to read the Word of God. Read the Bible through. Read the Bible through. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, get in that thing. Five chapters. There's only 1,189 chapters. 1,189 chapters. 31,175 verses. 810,697 words. 3,566,480 inspired letters. It's a lamp under my feet. It's a light under my path. It shows me what to do. It shows me what not to do. It keeps me from getting in trouble. It makes my steps go right. Why would I leave God's Word laying down on the table somewhere? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall man live. The bad news is time flies. The good news is you're the pilot. One half your time on your cell phone, you can read the Bible through. One half. Most of your time on your phone is spent what I call playing. You're just playing. You're a grown man, but you like to play like little kids with toys, and, and you're a grown woman, but you like to play, don't you? You just like to play. Just flip around. Oh, what's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? this is fun. This is fun. This is fun. Well, it's all right to play a little bit for a kid. Little kids should get to play. But the Bible said there comes a time when you put away childish things, man up a little bit. Brother, there's more important things in this world than playing. There's nothing wrong with playing a little bit, entertain if it's clean, good, clean, fun. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But Lord have mercy, people, you don't you don't have time to read the Bible. My Bible, I ask my wife. My Bible reading comes first, first. You know why? If you don't put it first, you won't do it. You say I'll do it after a while. You won't. I'll do it tonight before I go to bed. Yeah. There you go. After you watch a ball game, an hour of news, you get three verses and your head's back. Back out like a zombie. It's amazing how you can stay wide awake and watch that video on YouTube and watch all this stuff. As soon as you pick up your Bible, you can't hold your eye. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that the weirdest thing ever? How you can stay awake and love every minute of it? And you've done looked at that phone an hour? Can't read your Bible all the way through? Lord, have mercy. You should. You should. If you're here this morning, you got a fifth grade education. You read most of the Bible is written in third grade English. There's a few words in there that are hard to understand. Try to say them. Like the longest word in the Bible, Meher, Shaler, Hashbaz. That's the longest word in the Bible. I don't know if that's right. That's what I always say. Meher, Shaler, Hashbaz. Some guy, what a name, brother. How'd you like to have to be your name? And I'm telling you something, man. I try to say it. If you can't say it, try to say it. Don't skip over it. Read it. Finally, my commitment for 2017. My commitment for 2017. All right? I commit by the help of the Lord, not in my own strength, to be a faithful man of God for our church. I ain't much. I'm not the best preacher in the world. I'm not the best. But I'll tell you one thing. I can be faithful to this church. By the grace of God, I want to be faithful to Shining Light Baptist Church this coming year. I want you to know. I want you to know before you get here. I'll tell you one thing. You come with me to my church Sunday morning, you're going to get it. I want you to know that. I want people to say, you don't have to worry about my preacher getting up there whining around and saying, well, I didn't have time to study this week, so let's sing a while. There are preachers that do that. I don't, I don't want you to have to say, well, he might show up and he might not. He, he takes three or four fishing trips every year and he's gone eight, seven or eight Sundays. Lord, I don't ever know when he's going. I'm not, I want you to know, brother, by the grace of God, that I'm going to be standing right here in my place. I want, I, I want if I 
I have a legacy? If I do, I'd like for people to look back and say, Old Brother Danny wasn't much, but he preached the best he's ever preached in 2017. I'd like that. I'd like to do that. And you ought to feel the same way. You ought to want to be a better whatever you are. A better teacher, a better preacher, a better singer, a better uh, whatever. I want to be a faithful man of God this year. I want to be a better Bible preacher. I want to give you more Bible than I've ever given you. I want to feed you the Word of God. I want to take, teach you Scripture. I want to teach you doctrine. I want to get you encouragement. I want to teach you rebuke and reproof. Ladies and gentlemen, my commitment for this year is to be a faithful man of God. Amen. I want to be, I'm, a, I'm a Baptist preacher. And I'm still going to be a Baptist preacher this year. Does that bother you? You say, well, Brother Danny, I think we could get more. Our, our total purpose ain't to get more. I'm all for it. Praise God, I wish thousands walk in that door this morning. But I'm telling you, I'm a Bible preacher first, and I am a Baptist preacher. We hold to the historic Baptist faith of preaching the Bible to people and baptizing them in water and, and, the, and the historic position of the church that the Baptist church... Listen, when you go to church, you ought to know what that church is and it ought to be something. You say, well, what's that church? Who knows? It's a no-name brand. Y'all are getting a little nervous. but Somebody needs to teach you a little something. Might as well do it now. It's New Year's Day. You ain't in no hurry, are you? You laid out last week, so you might as well get double today. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, listen. You hear me this morning. Hey, you hear me today. Listen, when I go to the store and I see a bunch of cans, I'm looking, what if all the cans just said food? Dog food or noodle soup? I'm looking for noodle soup. Where's the... Oh, oh we, don't, we don't believe in labels because that makes people feel alienated. You'll get more customers if you just say food. Well, I ain't eating it. I want to know, bless God, what's in it. I want to know what's in that. When I go to a church, I want to know what it believes. I want to know where you stand. Hey, I don't want you to say, come as you are, leave worse. I mean, it don't matter what you believe. We embrace all faiths here because we don't really take a stand on, on the second coming or we don't really take a stand on the charismatic movement or we don't really take a stand. It's just whatever in the different Bible versions and everything. That's a, that's a, that's a magpie's nest of mess. You say, well, I thought, Lordy mercy, it's 2017, you'd lighten up a little bit. No, I think we better tie the hats down a little tighter. You're waiting on me to change what I believe. You better stand in line, brother, and Methuselah will be dead and back uh, before I change what I believe about this book right here. By His grace! By His grace! By His grace! You need a preacher that'll stand up here every Sunday and let it rip! Let the chips fall where they will. You know what's wrong with some of you people? You are scared to death of people you work with or people that are afraid they're going to call you some kind of fanatic or overboard. You're, you're terrified of ridicule and you know what's right and you're scared to stand on it because you think, well, I don't want people thinking I'm not. Well, listen, man, if, if you can't live for God now, as easy as it is, if you're, ashamed of, <laughs> if you're ashamed of the Bible and the preacher and church, you're really going to, it's really, it's going to get a lot worse. So you better make up your mind, I'm not ashamed. I, I want to be a faithful church member. I want to be a faithful church member. I'm not only a pastor here, I'm a member here. That means I'm supposed to support this church with my time, my talent, and my tithe. All three. And God's people say it. Amen. Boy, I was sick a while ago, and I'm feeling good right now. I, was, I believe in healing right now, buddy. I feel fine except for right in there. And uh, I'm telling you this morning, brother, uh, I want to be a faithful church member. Get up and go to church. 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 You say, well, I don't have to. I'm saying, yeah, you are. Well, that little boy told his mom one time, she said, she said uh, he said, Mama, do you have to go to church to go to heaven? You don't have to go to church to go to heaven. She said, No. You don't have to have a parachute to jump out of an airplane. But it sure helps it. And it's your landing a lot better, don't it? You don't have to go to church to serve God. But if your heart's right, you want to go to church. Did you hear me? I said, if your heart's right, 
You want to go to church. If you have to work or you can't, you're sick, that's different. But if you don't want to go, there's something wrong. There's either something wrong with your church or something wrong with you. Amen. Hallelujah. You ought to be a faithful church member. With my tithe. You know what I do when I get my check cashed? I get my check cashed at the bank. I take out my tithe and my offering. I stick it down in that little envelope over there or that pocket. That's nobody's money but God's. If somebody gives me $20 during the week, I'll take out $2 at least, maybe a five, and put it in there. If somebody walks up to me and says, I love you, Brother Danny, here's your $100, 10% 10% of that money and an offering goes into that little slot. And every Sunday, I put it in my... I don't send that to a TV preacher. I don't give that to a bus kids. I don't give that to a family down the road that needs help. That goes in these offering plates. That the work. This is the church, people. This is the church. God's the Lord's body on this earth. I want to support the church that I belong to. When I go off on to uh, preach somewhere else, I save my tithes, put it right back in here. When I get back, and by the grace of God, 2017, I want to support my... I, I know everybody. everybody's all happy and everything. Remind me of old, them old, old-time black preacher years ago. I, I, I loved the way they, they preached, and I still like to hear them. That old guy got up and he said, uh, uh, he said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to do better this year. He said, I want to tell you, uh, uh, we, we, we need to let the church walk. And the old deacon stood up over here and he said, yeah, let the church walk. And the preacher, got, he got up there and hit second gear. And he said, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we need to do better. Let the church run. And the old deacon looked at him and said, yeah, let the church run, Pastor. Boy, he got in third gear, reached up here again. He said, ladies and gentlemen, I said we need to do better. Uh, 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 Let the church fly. The old deacon jumped up and he said, yeah, let the church fly, pastor. He said, now it's going to take a lot of money to fly. And the deacon said, let the church walk. (laughs) You know what the moral of that story is? Everybody wants church to fly, but nobody don't want to give nothing for it. Ain't that right? Everybody wants, why don't we do this, preacher? Why don't we do that, preacher? Why don't we build? Well, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you, listen, let the church walk, brother. Let the church fly. I'm going to support it this year by God's grace. Well, I want to be a faithful father. My three girls sitting over there. I've disappointed my kids. And I've failed them many times. But by God's grace, in 2017, I want them to know every day of their life, my daddy's somewhere. I don't know where he is right now, but he's doing right. He's serving God. I want my girls to know. Can your kids say that about you? Or they wonder where you're at and what you're doing half the time. Are you living in such a way that makes your kids wonder if you're even a Christian. It's not, it's not going to hurt you. If you're a husband, in, in 2017, honey, you ain't got nothing to worry about. I ain't running around on you. I'm not cheating on you. I'm not going to. By the grace of God, you're the only woman in my life. Amen, fellas. Say amen. All you women in here this morning ought to say, by the grace of God... If there's already somebody flirting with you at work or you're talking to them on that stupid thing, however how you communicate, flip a booger, flip a booger, whatever it is, or, or, or nose book or uh, instant grits or something, another you call it. You're, you're calling, if you're already talking to somebody, do you know what you need to do this morning? This morning. Hey, it's not worth the price you're going to pay. It's not worth the trouble that's coming. It's not worth your kid crying himself to sleep at night. Saying, where's mama? Where's daddy? How come y'all are busting up? You're going to lose everything you've got if you don't cut that devil off and get that person out of your life. That ain't right. You hear, I wish I felt good this morning. I'd just haul off and preach a little while. You, you, God has honored you by me being sick. He said, mercy on you. He said, mercy on you. I'm telling you. 
I'm just about that far just hauling off and saying, but hey, hey, cut you, hey, if you got a brain in your head, girls, ladies, don't put pictures of yourself on the internet. Provocative. Wick are you crazy? You say, Well, I don't see anything wrong with my you would if there's another woman doing it. Nobody can spot a sin like one woman and another woman. They can see better than God. Some of y'all getting a little nervous now. Just take it easy. Don't put a wicked picture of yourself and then it's like, that old pervert won't leave me alone. You're inviting him. You're asking for it. Now stuff like that's what gets me in trouble. You say, oh, you can't blame her. And she dresses wicked and shows her body out there. It's part her fault. If he flirts on her and hits, with, hits on her. If you're dressing decent and doing right and the pervert won't leave you alone, then shout, hallelujah. But if you're showing your legs and showing you other stuff, that you, didn't, you had to buy and then try and impress. Don't get mad for pervert hits on you. You don't want to look like one of the Kardashians on the internet. I mean, Lord have mercy. Put your, don't put wicked pictures on And don't flirt with them. And don't, don't go in Mr. Nice Guy at work and talk to your wife like she's a dog. And then go to work and say, Oh, you look pretty today, Mrs. So-and-so. You old perverted playboy. Be predictable. Be predictable. You say, well, people shouldn't judge me. But they do, and you do, you judge them. You know we all judge, and you you can't help it. If you saw a man walk in there with a suit and a tie on this morning, and you saw a man walk in there, like, and he had on sunglasses and a hood, and everything. I mean, everybody, and don't you sit there and lie. We naturally size them up different. Now, are you supposed to? No. Can you help it? No. By the way, while I'm on that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. You know, I'm standing up here with a suit and a tie on, sweating this morning because I take my job seriously. I, I praise God for you men to get up dressed like a man when you come to church, the house of God. Thank God for you ladies. About all of you remembered your skirt today. Hey, maybe a couple of you maybe forgot to put it on. You put your tights on, but you forgot your skirt. Right? Listen, when I first got right with God, I went to Roses and Marion, saved up my money, had $19. And I bought me a shirt and a tie. And I said, I'm going to God's house. I want to do right. I want to serve God. I want to look like a preacher and somebody that loves Jesus. Ain't nothing wrong with cleaning up more. So come in here. Are you, you come in looking like Eminem. That's what kind of way people's going to size you up. You say, Preacher, I can't afford them big suits like you do. Your tennis shoes cost more than this suit I got on. You got a $100 pair of tennis shoes, this suit was $69 at the Burlington Outlet. And don't give me that baloney. You got a $150 pair of tennis shoes. I bet you wish I'd just go ahead and hush while I got mine. Some of you men need to make up your mind. This morning, that you're going to clamp down on the music you let be played in your house and the movies you allow to be watched in your house this year. You're getting worse and worse and worse. You say, how do you know? I don't know. I'm just saying that because God put it in my heart. I don't have nobody in mind. But I'm telling you what, that music! Let me, I went into a store yesterday, and we've been to camp all week. Ain't seen the news. Ain't seen TV or nothing. And I went in a store, and this real wild, hard, it was saying, come on and go with us, come on and go with us, boom, boom. And before I got out of that store, I was feeling like, where are we going? <laughs> Ain't that stuff powerful, people? I was full of the Holy Ghost, I thought, when I went in there. It don't take long for that stuff to suck a pirate spirit right out of you. And your problem is you say, well, we don't listen to rock music in our house. But then you let the kids play the video game and it's full of the same wicked music. The, devil, the devil's smart. He knows how to get it in there somehow or another. He knows how to get it in there. 
Listen, if they have to play them games, make them turn that junk off. You say, well, that's what makes it fun. I'm telling you that stuff, it'll make them think different, it'll make them feel different, and it'll make your kids have feelings they shouldn't be feeling for a long time and make them think Mr. Wright's out there, Mr. One, Miss Wonderful's out there. Let me, that, that boy up here a while ago, listen, the, the girl of your dreams is a sinner and will disappoint you. The man of your dreams, Hollywood's crazy. They, could, they don't even know how to straighten out their hair. They ain't got no right to tell us how to run our relationship. Every relationship has problems. There's no such thing as falling in love and living happily ever after in this world and no problems. It don't exist! And if you left your husband this week and got that guy that you think is so wonderful, within six months you'd say, you're just like him. Then you've done lost everything. Am I right, people? Well, I ain't through, but I'm going to hush. About some of you teenagers saying, you know what? I'm going to straighten up at home, and I'm going to honor my mom and my dad, and I'm going to respect my daddy. When daddy comes in the house and says, we're doing this, or we're gonna I'm not going to argue with him. The thing I can't stand is these kids say, why, why, why not, why not, well, why not? Why not? Just, just be quiet. You're the, you're the, you're the man. You're the, the woman, they're paying the bills, you're living in their house, you're eating their food, and the Bible says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth. You're getting in trouble when you disrespect your parents. That ought to be some of you, some of you girls ought to say, You know what? School starts Tuesday, and I'm going back to school, and I'm going to be a Christian. Some of you men are saying, I'm not, I'm, look, I've seen these boys wanting to wear a tie to church this morning. Wasn't thank God, boys, thank God. I, know, I mean, I know that ain't a, I know, but it shows something. It shows something. Your clothes don't reveal, I know that, I know that. Clothes don't make you right or not right, but it shows something. It shows something. Them old farmers years ago didn't have nothing but a pair of overhauls and a white shirt. My buddy, they cleaned it up and shined them shoes, and they brought their Bible to church, and they want to serve God. They said, this is the best I've got, and I'm going to do it. Maybe you've been out of church. This morning you want to say, you know what? I'm getting back in here. You know how you backslide? You quit coming on Wednesday night. Then you quit coming on Sunday night. Then you quit coming to Sunday school. And all you got Sunday morning left, then you're out. I've seen a 1,000 people do it. And you, ain't nobody in here above it. Ain't nobody in here above it. Some of you daddies need to make up your mind. I'm the daddy. We're going to get up. Get out of bed. Get up. Up. I told him, there's a gang spent the night the house last night. I told him, I said, go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. Oh, I'm not tired of anything. I said, now I'm going to tell you in the morning why I'm telling you to go to bed. So this morning I said, get up. Uh, that's why I told you to go to bed like that. After 20 years of that, don't it start sinking through your head? If you don't go to bed, you can't get up. How long does it take to learn that? You better hope you don't get a job one of these days. Some of you boys, you'll, start, you'll get fired the first week. What's your... Have I left anything out? Brush your teeth, bless God. All right, that's my vision for 2017. I want to do better. I want to do worse. I want to do better. You know, she's coming. We're going. Well, I'm just going to pray with you and let you go. But when I first got saved, last night was the second time in 40 years I ain't been to watch night service because of the way it worked out. I, it felt so weird. When I first got saved, every church had a New Year's Eve service around here. Every Bible preaching church. Now they ain't hardly none of them know. You know why people don't? We're blessed. We got plenty. What do we want to go to church for? Sure, you all the time. That, there's something wrong with us. There's something wrong with us. We better shake ourselves. Because if you don't, God will shake you for you if you refuse to shake yourself. So I stayed up and we prayed in the new year last night. And the Lord knows, God knows we don't need less church. We need more. We don't need less. Lord God, we need more in this coming year. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. I'm just going to pray with you and let you go.